Why do you look for the living among the dead? That's what the angel said. Happy Easter. Liturgically, this is uh, Easter is already dawned on us. Uh, though time-wise, maybe we think we need to touch 12 o'clock. Uh, if that's so, then what are you doing here? <laughs> Easter is a time when we remind ourselves of God's victory. I don't know if you, you watch any of the Marvel uh, uh, movies, but uh, I went to watch one uh, with a, f- a few family friends in, uh, here in Melbourne. And that was, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, or oh, last year, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but it was Spider-Man, and that was uh, Far From Home. Isn't that one of those? Yeah. Okay, that's the recent one. So now we, we all know how, how sometimes we go to watch movies in theaters. You know, by the time the end kind of comes in, there'll be a few of us who always feel that we need to get up and leave before the others rush. And then by the time we slowly stream out, the ones who waited till the end, they will still pass us and go and we will not have reached the car. But some of us just have that irritating habit. We need to just get up and walk off before thinking everyone's going to be uh, going to follow us or going to crowd around us. So we watch the whole movie and at, at the end of the movie, we have uh, Spider-Man defeating the, uh, the, the enemy and... Um, and then it is uh, Spider-Man swinging through Manhattan all over. And then he takes uh, Mary Jane in his arms and, and they are swinging all over Manhattan. And, you know, the, the, the typical ending. And then uh, we thought, OK, now it's going to be the end. And so um, we all got up and we started walking out till someone actually tapped us, made the effort of leaning across and tapping us. How many of you have seen that Spider-Man oh, movie? Only the kids. You guys are old. (laughs) So one guy actually leaned over and tapped and said, wait on. Wait on. And so we had reached the steps. So we stood there, we turned, and we looked. And there was actually a very important end to that Spider-Man movie. Because that's going to be the start of the next Spider-Man series. So if we didn't get that, we wouldn't understand why the next Spider-Man series start. The reason I'm saying this is, very often, we see that on Good Friday, especially here in Australia, on Good Friday, everyone comes to church. Even those who never come to church, come to church on Good Friday. But not everyone comes for Easter Sunday. And that's pretty surprising, that everyone comes for Good Friday, but not everyone comes for Easter Sunday. It's like the story is half. It's like we've missed out on the end. And if you don't don't get that end, then you won't understand the continuation of the whole of salvation history of what we have here and what we celebrate. If we don't have the resurrection, we don't have the church. There is no meaning to the church itself without the resurrection. So it is not just the crucifixion of Jesus. The crucifixion of Jesus is completed. The salvation of mankind is completed with God defeating death. That is important. Because if God doesn't defeat death and it was only about the crucifixion, then we Christians have nothing to boast about. We don't even have anything to hold on to. He was just a man who's buried in some Middle Eastern country and nothing more than that. And that is why the resurrection is as important as the crucifixion. They are one. It's not two. They are one. And it's important for us today when we, when we celebrate 
Easter Sunday for us to understand that Jesus defeated death. He defeated the mockery that he went through. He defeated the scourging that he went through. He defeated the, the purple robes that were put on to him. He defeated the spittle that was, that was put on his face. He defeated the crown of thorns. He defeated the death sentence. He defeated death. And that is why 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 55 would tell us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 55. Very famously as the scripture would say, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting. Why? Because God has defeated death. God has defeated death. Now, for all who were in Team Jesus, they can celebrate. You know, it's uh, when, you, when you kind of have uh, your favorite teams, you, you support one team, one team wins and there will be a celebration. Isn't that true? What do the other team do? All the, they lose and all the supporters will kind of be quiet. Last year, Liverpool won the league and I proudly put out Liverpool's scarf in my car. And I did that till December last because they were still on top of the league. And after December, they had seven losses on the trot and that scarf kind of came down to my seat. It's no more on the window now. Well, all those who were on Team Jesus, Easter is a celebration. He has defeated death. You would have the Marys, Mary the mother of God, Mary Magdalene and all the other Marys who would celebrate because the one we believed in has defeated death. John, who was at the foot of the cross bravely, unlike all the other disciples, will celebrate. My Lord defeated death. He's on team Jesus. They're on team Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea, as the scripture says, was a good and righteous man. And he comes and he takes the body of Jesus, puts him in that special tomb. He celebrates because he is in team Jesus. Then there are those as well, who maybe at the start didn't, weren't on Team Jesus, but they kind of got on to Team Jesus in between. Nicodemus was one. Initially, he was not on Team Jesus. But after some time, he kind of saw the league tables are changing. And then suddenly, he hops on to Team Jesus. Good work, not bad. He got on to Team Jesus. Nicodemus is there as well. At the crucifixion, he's taking down the body of Jesus. Then we have Simon of Cyrene who was kind of forced onto Team Jesus, or was forced into Team Jesus. And then he carries the cross. Not bad. It's good. Don't worry, because all of this reflects something that we are. Some of us are like Marys. Some of us are like John. We are always there. Some of us kind of hopped on a little later. But still, we are there in Team Jesus. That's important. Then there was, like I spoke on uh, during, during um, Good Friday, Saint. Saint? You forgot that Saint, did you? Didn't you? Ah. Dismiss, very good. Saint Dismiss, the good thief. At the last minute, he hopped on. Team Jesus, he celebrates as well. Don't worry, this is what the scripture says. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16, it speaks about the parable of the vineyard, the one who started out first. What did, what did the owner promise? One denarii. The ones who came a few hours later? One denarii. The ones who came at the last? One denarii. Everyone in team Jesus? One denarii. Now, all of us who went through Lent and who've gone through these, these beautiful days of either Lent or even through this year in faithfulness to God, in prayer, in fasting and offering ourselves, Team Jesus, celebrate. And the others who didn't do very well, 
those who weren't in Team Jesus, you will celebrate as well. Why? Because the scripture says, there is, there is maybe, maybe we feel that we are the rest. You know, not on Team Jesus. And maybe I didn't do very well. Maybe I didn't have good Lenten observances. Maybe I fell halfway through. Maybe I've had a pathetic year. I've not been, I've not been spiritually on a high. I've been dry and I've been, I've been pretty much left out. Remember, there was, there was a justice, the one I spoke about yesterday, the, the bad thief. Well, sadly, he, he had words of mockery towards Jesus and he was, he was selfish and worldly in his attitudes. Maybe that is what we were. Through the year, maybe that is what we were. We were selfish, we were worldly, we weren't spiritual at all. Or maybe we were like Caiaphas. We led we led the wrong team. And maybe we kind of instigated people against Team Jesus itself. Maybe there were times we were like, like Caiaphas, where we instigated people in speaking even against the faith. Or we didn't even speak up for the faith when they spoke against the faith. Maybe we, we at that time were not in Team Jesus, and we were like Caiaphas. Or maybe we were like Pilate. He washed his hands in the wrong bowl. He just washed his hands. He failed to defend the Lord at the right time. Maybe we too have failed to defend the Lord at the right time. And we were not on team Jesus. Maybe we were like the crowd who kept rooting for the wrong person. Maybe at times we kept rooting more for the world than we kept rooting for God. Our voices never came out in support of God, but our voices kept silent. Maybe we were not on Team Jesus. We were the crowd. Or maybe we were the Roman soldiers. We were enjoying the wrong game. Watching the wrong game and enjoying the wrong game. And this whole thing was a big fat drama for us and we were just not involved. We were not involved in the church. We were not involved in church activities. We were not involved in the Eucharist. Maybe we were just here for Good Friday and for Easter Sunday, and that's all. And we were not on Team Jesus. So all those not on Team Jesus, is it bad luck? Is it you have nothing to celebrate? This is where we need to remember Jesus, when rising from the dead, did not defeat Pilate. Jesus, when rising from the dead, did not defeat the crowd. Jesus, when rising from the dead, did not defeat justice. Jesus, when rising from the dead, wasn't defeating Caiaphas. Jesus, when rising from the dead, was defeating the evil one. And so the defeat is not for those who are not on Team Jesus. The defeat is always aimed towards the evil one. The one who wants to captivate human souls. And therefore, Easter is a celebration, not only for those who were on Team Jesus, but Easter is a celebration for humankind. Because salvation has been won for us. And that is what we celebrate. That is what we rejoice in. Maybe when you look back, you might feel like a Caiaphas. You might feel like a pilot. You might feel like the crowd. And you might think to yourself, I haven't done well. You might look around you and see some amazing people of faith who have kept the faith all through the year, who have had amazing Lenten observances, who have been to church all the time, and you think you don't add up. You don't match up. You don't feel that you're a saint. Don't think once to yourself that you cannot celebrate Easter because Jesus has defeated death. He has defeated the evil one and brought victory for humankind, for all of us. Believe in that beautiful promise for that is why we don't just believe in the death of Christ. We also believe in the 
resurrection of Christ. If it was only the death of Jesus, we had nothing to hold on to. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. Is it up there? Not there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. Yep, can you read that? And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain as well. If Christ was not raised, then our faith is in vain. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, yes, we are most to be pitied because Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being and resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Easter is a celebration for all of us because he has defeated death. So even if you have not reached the pinnacle of spirituality, and even if maybe you've, you've fallen on the wayside, just know in your heart, maybe if you've lost your way through Lent or lost your way through the year, know in your heart that the Lord is saying, humankind, this is your victory. The heavens are saying, humankind, Easter is your victory. Because we have defeated death in the Lord. It doesn't mean that there is no suffering. It doesn't mean that there will not be death. It doesn't mean that there will not be sin. But it means that we will not fear suffering. It means that we will not fear sin. It means that we will not fear death. Because our Christ has defeated all of these. And therefore this day today for us is always um, a day of celebration. It's a day of victory for us. In Colossians chapter 2 Verse 12, we would read Colossians 2.12. Can we read that together? When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. So today, there should not be one face that is sad. There should not be one face that doesn't think that this celebration is not my celebration all of us today are called by the Lord, hop on to team Jesus because the victory is ours. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Jesus, Lord, some of us have been exceptional on this journey, the Lenten journey, the yearly journey. We've got it right. We've pushed ourselves and we've grown from last year. But Lord, for some of us, maybe we've slipped, we've fallen. But Lord Jesus, it's a reminder today to us that we are not defeated. If our Lord has defeated death, we too will have the victory. For in baptism, we are one with you. Then in resurrection, we will be one with you. Suffering, sin, and death will have no control over us and we will not live in fear for our God defeated death. Amen.